If you're a VR enthusiast like me, you're probably always chasing that next immersive high. I love VR, but the wow factor has definitely worn off, and I struggle to find experiences that wow me anymore. But when Vario reached out and said they wanted to send me out the Aero headset, I was more than happy to accept. The Vario Aero has been considered the best consumer grade headset available, and I was excited to see what all the hype was about. Most impressively, the Vario Aero has dual mini LED screens with a resolution of 2880 by 2720 pixels per eye, which is insane. Compare that to other VR headsets on the market, it's just way out of their league. And I've been lucky to be able to try out most of those VR headsets. So I did what any VR reviewer would do, and I booted up Half-Life Alex. This is a game I first experienced on the Oculus Rift, which has half the resolution of the Vario Aero. And let me tell you, this game is impressive on any resolution, but being able to see all the details of the environment at high quality resolution was just mind blowing. To be able to experience a game you already love in a new way is really eye opening. I've never noticed all the fine details of the gloves and how they look like they've been put together with mixed circuit boards and transistors. And I can actually read all the font on the posters, which is something I really struggled with when I first played through on my Oculus Rift. Seeing all the bubbles fizz and pop in the beer bottles is such a fine detail and a real treat to experience and open my eyes up to all the amazing detail this game possesses. But to play a game I haven't played in a long time didn't feel like a genuine experience with the VR headset, so of course I booted up Beat Saber. And honestly, I wasn't really expecting much. I mean, Beat Saber is just a bunch of blocks and text and you're just kind of standing still, but I was severely wrong. I was totally blown away by how crisp the game looked. The text was pencil sharp and actually eligible. I didn't know how blurry it had actually been because I was so accustomed to it. And the blocks were so detailed, they actually looked 3D. The game felt like it had actual depth, and I was slicing buttery neon blocks with great details and colour. The environment possessed so much more detail as well. The new Fallout Boy music pack was just a dark crowd of environment on my index, but on the arrow, I could actually see all the details. I could see the details of the neon lights, I could actually see the crowd, and most importantly, I could actually see the images on the back screen, which I had no idea what was going on there previously. To be able to experience a game you played a million times in a new and amazing way is just so mind blowing. I didn't think I could have a new appreciation for this game, but to be able to experience it in its like actual full resolution and detail has just given me a totally new experience of the game. Experiencing this level of resolution just felt real. I didn't feel like I had a computer screen strapped to my head. I felt like what I was seeing was just what I was seeing. Like it felt it felt real. So Vario claimed that the resolution of the headset is on par with the human retina, which I didn't really, I guess, get my head around until I actually felt that kind of realness and immersion. So it's definitely a really cool experience. But enough of fangirling, let's get to the techie stuff. And the bad stuff, because unfortunately, there's lots of it. In the box, the Vario Aero comes with your standard cable with a power adapter, a cable for DisplayPort and USB, which means yes, this is a PC VR headset. So you will need a PC to run it, and you will need a pretty powerful PC. So you'll need a GeForce 2080 or higher to run this headset, but you'll probably want higher. I ran mine with a 3080, and it was definitely working the fans pretty hard. You'll also need all the additional VR accessories. That's right, it doesn't come with the controllers or the sensors needed to run this headset. I assume this headset is designed more as an upgrade for those who already own like a Vibe Pro or a Valve Index, but it doesn't come with those sensors or controllers or anything you need to actually run the headset. The headset comes with its own software with a bunch of its own features and this is what connects it up to Steam VR. A really cool feature of this headset is that it has eye tracking. And this is how it calculates your IPD. So when you put the headset on, it automatically adjusts the lenses to be the right width of path based on the eye tracking built in. The headset also has a refresh rate of 90 hertz, a horizontal field of view of 115 degrees, and it also has this active cooling fan at the top of the headset that blows cool air on your face, which is pretty cool. Comfort wise, it's actually really, really comfortable. I really did like the design of this headset, found it very comfortable, very easy to adjust. And build wise, you could tell that this headset was made with quality. Every part of it felt solid and like expensive, which is kind of what you want. But my biggest issue of this headset is that there's no inbuilt headphones or microphone. 
Which when you're forking out $2,000 on a VR headset, you kind of want that stuff included. And yes, you heard right. This headset is $2,000 USD. So I can't even imagine what that equates to in Australian dollars. For just the headset, with no headphones, no microphone, no controllers, and no sensors. But it does have a 3.5 millimeter jack on the side and it comes with some little earbuds in the box. But for me, this is a big deal breaker. I absolutely love inbuilt headphones on VR headsets and I absolutely hate having to put on the VR headset and then deal with putting another headset over the top. I stream a lot and for hours at a time and constantly taking that stuff on and off, I just, I hate it. It's a deal breaker for me. Might be a personal preference, but for $2,000, I need those inbuilt headphones. So apart from the cost and the lack of headphones, this is a really great headset. But unfortunately, there's one big issue that needs to be addressed. And that's the distortion issue. When standing still, everything on the arrow looks amazing. But as soon as you start to look around or move around, the edges of the lens start to distort, almost creating a fisheye image. Initially, I thought something was wrong with my headset, that my computer couldn't handle it, or my drivers were incorrect. But when jumping on the internet, I found a mass amount of forums and videos discussing the issue. I tried multiple things to overcome the issue and eventually reached out to Vio. They advised me they have a new software update with the setting, which aims to solve the issue, which means Vio are aware of the issue. So I updated the software and switched it on, but the issue still existed. I mean, it was kinda better, but it was still definitely there. Over time, I felt like I did start to get used to it though, and I found moving my head rather than my eyes kinda helped with the issue as well. But that's not really a natural way to look around an environment. But standing still, everything looks so amazing, but looking around just made everything so distorted and disorienting, which is just a big shame. Don't get me wrong, the headset is amazing. The resolution is stunning. It makes me very excited about the future of VR. But these distortion issues are a problem. Even with the price point and no headphones aside, this is something you do need to be really aware of if you are considering investing in this headset. But I am really hopeful that Vario can resolve the issue. They're clearly actively working on it and I imagine it is just a firmware issue that they can resolve. I'm really hopeful that they do resolve this issue because I want this experience. I want this VR headset and I want that level of resolution and immersion for my VR games. But I just want it to be worth the price point I consider myself a pretty heavy VR user and you know, I am the crazy person who does invest too much money in VR gear. But with these issues, it's just not worth that price point at the moment. Plus the headphones still a deal breaker, but you know, I feel like hopefully in more firmware updates or maybe future iterations of the headset, they can maybe resolve these issues. And I think if you're someone who plays simulation games that are stationary, you could probably still get a really great experience out of this headset. And I feel over time that you would get used to the distortion issue. But for now, I think this headset is a really great showcase of what's possible in VR. It makes me very excited about the future. I just hope the Vario can nail it, but unfortunately, it's just not quite there yet. But until then, I remain hopeful that Vario can overcome these issues because I'd love to see them become a real competitor in the PC VR space. Thanks for watching this video, and I'll see you next time. Peace.